I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I am the youngest of four children in my family, and so I uh, still to this day have some obnoxious youngest child habits. Um, I'm looking at some of you out there who are, who are youngest. Um, one of them that pertains to Easter is that I have this Easter playlist. I know this is um, no surprise to some of you. I have this Easter playlist. And about 6.30 in the morning, I, I have a nice stereo too, I turn it up to 11, and I start playing Easter hymns so loud that the windows in the rectory vibrate a little bit. And the past couple of years, that, that didn't seem like that was obnoxious enough. I mean, my family thinks otherwise, but uh, I, this, the past few years, I've um, you know, had some occasion to go on a drive on Easter afternoon, so I'll roll down all the windows, and I'll just roll really slow through like Darby Road with my windows down, and, and the, the speaker's so high that I think I actually busted one of the speakers last year. And one of the songs, so this is true, I mean, you, about four o'clock this afternoon, um, go outside and you'll hear me. One of the songs on my playlist is the one that we just sang. Jesus lives, thy terrors now can, O death, no more appall us. Man, that is a good song. Another one that is on there is, and this is going to um, you know, tell me that the priest graduated from, from college in 2005 without telling me that the priest graduated from college in 2005. Dave Matthews, right? Um, there's, there's this song that Dave Matthews sings, and, and he, I guess it's about his grandfather who passed away, and he wrote this song about it. And the, the um, chorus of the song goes like this. I love you oh so well, like a kid loves candy and fresh snow. I love you oh so well, enough to fill heaven, overflow, and fill hell. Love that song. That is a fantastic Easter song because it is about love. And Scripture tells us that God is love. Scripture tells us that God created the universe for no other reason but for love. God didn't need the universe. God created the universe because of the overflowing love that God has. It wasn't enough for God just to, to have love in God's self. It overflowed. And so God created the world, and God created us for love. And think about, you know, I was thinking about, about evolution and the billions of years that it took for life to evolve on earth. Just think about the love that God had for that process. God is not a fickle lover. God is loving for the long game. Billions of years. And God created us for love, to love God, to love each other. But love requires a choice. You can't be forced to love. And so we have this choice and we can choose not to love. And so the story of Scripture is that humanity chose not to love and sin and death entered the world. But God, the love of God, the love that God has for each and every one of us, he was not content to leave us in sin and death. So that love overflowed heaven and came to earth. God became a human being, and his name was Jesus, and he lived a life as we live. He became a human as we are human. Jesus had a family, and guess what? His family didn't always understand him. Jesus had a family, and he fought with them. He wasn't the youngest child. He was the oldest child, but um, I'm sure his youngest brother really annoyed him. Jesus had a mom who made him do things he didn't want to do. Looking at all of you, not, not, none of you out there <laughs> have moms who made you get up and comb your hair and, uh, and put on nice clothes. But Jesus had a mom who 
his first miracle. He didn't want to do it, but his mom said, Jesus, come on, do the miracle. And so he did. <laughs> Jesus had friends. He had people who he loved and cared for deeply. We read a couple of weeks ago a story of one of Jesus' friends who died, and Jesus wept at the tomb, at the grave of his friends. Jesus had friends who betrayed him. The story of, of Judas, who betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, and who comes to him in the garden and betrays him with a kiss. Jesus had friends who abandoned him in the hour of his greatest need and left him all alone. Jesus entered into every aspect of human life. The highs and the lows. Jesus suffered everything that we suffer. Depression, isolation, fear, suffering, death. A horrible, horrible death. Jesus took all of that on. God took all of that on because God's love overflowed heaven and came to earth. But even that was not enough. God's love overflowed heaven. God's love overflowed earth. And God's love went down to hell. I love the Orthodox tradition on Good Friday. They, they go outside after, you know, like two, three, four hours of church. They go outside and they march around a little bit. And then they come to the doors of the church and the priest starts pounding on the doors of the church, sometimes with the gospel book, because, you know, it's like metal. And he's pounding on the door of the church, and they, and they burst open, and all the lights come on. That represents what Christ did to the gates of hell. Christ descended to hell, to the very lowest of the lows, to all of the evil that we could ever imagine or that we could ever create. Christ embodied that. Christ went there. There's all of this beautiful poetry about Christ going, and the first person who he seeks out in hell is Judas, the one who betrayed him. And he cuts Judas down from the tree that Judas hung himself on, and he cradles him, and he forgives him. That is the love of God. Let me tell you, if David Matthews could, could imagine a love that overflows heaven and fills hell. Imagine the love that God has for each and every one of you. That God became human. That God died. That God stormed the very gates of hell for you and for all of us. That is something to get up and to put your nice clothes on and to come to church for. That is something that will change your life. This morning we're going to have a baptism and we're going to put water in that basin and it's going to splash everywhere and that water actually represents death. Baptism is about participating in the death of Christ, going through the waters of baptism just like the Israelites went through the Red Sea on dry land. And we go through the waters of baptism to emerge with Christ in newness of life. We can live that new life today, each and every one of us. We can take the joy of Easter. We can take the love of God that overflows heaven and fills hell, and we can take it out with us into the world to live a new life, to be a new creation. Alleluia. That song that I am going to probably bust the other side of my car stereo playing, one of the verses says, Jesus lives, our hearts know well, not from us his love shall sever. Life, nor death, nor powers of hell, tear us from his keeping ever. If you remember only one thing, Remember that there is absolutely nothing in life, in death, in hell. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen.